If you're looking to use quotes inside of Zoho CRM, this is the video for you. My name is Tyler Colt with Zanata Consulting. And in this video, we're gonna go over setting up products, using quotes, linking them up to contacts, accounts, and deals. I'm also gonna add in a few little best practices at the back end of the video, just as some helpful tips for everybody. Before I jump in, I do wanna ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave us a comment with any feedback, video requests, or questions that come up. And as always, just head on over to zanata.com and click on book a meeting uh, if you'd like to talk about how we can help with your Zoho install. To jump right in, quoting really starts in the products module. This is where you're going to essentially categorize all of the different goods and services that you have. You will notice inside of CRM, you have this services module. We don't normally end up using this because inside of the products module, we can just identify something as a service using the product category. And then it keeps our list a little bit cleaner. This gets extra important if you do end up syncing this data into Zoho Books as it's really just going to sync from the products module. So this is generally where we're going to start any of our quoting is just by coming in and making sure that we have products with SKUs and unit prices configured as that initial baseline. Once you've got your products in here, there are two ways that you can make a quote. I'm gonna show you the less common way first, and then I'm gonna show you the more common way and we'll kind of build off that example. So you can surely come directly to the quotes module and create a quote. From here, you can give it a quote name. This would just be kind of a quick descriptor. You can pick from a deal, from a contact, and from an account just based on this particular quote page. Then you can come in and add any of your items and quantities and prices. Now, that's not normally how we see people use the system. What's really common is that you've already created that account, that contact, and potentially that deal. And then we actually want to do our quoting from this deal. Now, the main benefits here of doing it this way is one, you're able to access the full deal pipeline for tracking the sales process. Now, if you're a business where you get a phone call, you say, hey, yep, I'll get you this item at this price. Let me send you a quote. And it's just one and done. You might just be able to launch that quote directly from a contact record rather than a deal because you don't really have much of a pipeline there. It's like, hey, they give you a call. I've got a price. It's a yes or no. What is more common is that you're working through some type of set of stages where eventually you get to the point where you've had the right conversations, you've got the buy-in from the right people, and it's now time to send out that quote. From a deal, over on the left-hand side under our related lists, you'll see that we have lists for quotes, sales orders, and invoices. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a quote and just click on new. Now, what you'll notice here, one little nice thing, pre-built into the quotes module, I didn't have to set this up, it'll just grab the deal, the contact, and the account directly from that deal record when you create it uh, using the related list. Let's say there's a quote for a migration. I can come in, I can set any of our stages. These are all customizable. It's gonna pull the address from the related account record, and then I can add in any of my products. Now, you might be thinking, and it'd be a good question, well, why the heck do I even really need the deal here? Couldn't I just make my stages line up with my deal pipeline, right? And then I just do everything from within the quote. What I'll say is there are definitely people that do that. It's not always a bad idea but I'll show you why we normally don't recommend it. A lot of the times, you might actually end up sending more than one quote, right? Maybe they say no to the first one and you say, okay, you know what? Let me throw on some discounts on there. I'll remove this one service that you might not need. Take a look at this quote. What also can happen is I might give them two quotes, right? I might say that this is the less expensive option, right? And say, hey, this is the quote that assumes you're gonna do some of the work, right? So maybe I have less service hours on here. Maybe I have less product because we're gonna do this in a simpler way, right? And so we're actually able to essentially have multiple different quotes that have been sent out to our client without having to create multiple deals. Now, the difference there between a quote and a deal is that the deal is that overall opportunity, that overall potential transaction the quote are like a couple different shapes that that transaction might take. And so here inside of my quote list, I'm gonna go ahead and just add our total so we can see that more easily. Now I know this deal is either gonna close at 600 or 1500, 
but I don't have to like make a duplicate deal because you don't actually have two opportunities in that case that are going to apply or be relevant for this particular potential sale. Might be thinking, okay, what happens next? One of these quotes gets accepted. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to show you one of my first little best practice tips as a part of this flow. So let's say we have our quote and this quote gets accepted, right? And we know, hey, you know what? This goes to closed one. Well, we might want to automatically update our deal stage, right? So that we don't have to click in two places. So what I can do is I can come in. I can create a workflow rule on quotes. Let's say on quote acceptance, update deal. So we'll say, hey, when our quote gets edited, and let's say it's when the status, oh, it's called stage, apologies, is updated to the value confirmed, closed one, whatever it may be. You can apply a filter here. I'm not going to in my case. This would just apply for any quote. I can actually now run a field update where I update that related deal. So I can say update deal to closed one or any other stage that would be relevant for you at that time. So I can say, hey, you know what? Quote gets accepted, I win, right? Awesome. Another thing that you can do is actually update the deal amount as a part of this so that you don't have to uh, manually update that. So what I'm gonna do real quick is we're gonna go through, kind of just add that function. Probably be a couple little cuts here just so I don't bore you, but essentially what we'll do is we'll add a, a function that'll be called quote value to deal. In this function, what we're going to do is essentially define over on the right our argument. We're going to click add arguments. We'll call this our quote ID. This is just that ID of the quote itself. Now, using that ID, we'll get all the data about the quote. Oops, a little autofill got ahead of me there. Now we'll get the related deal ID from that data. Now, if I'm going a little quick here, I know you would need to know some deluge for this. Good news is this is pretty universal. So we'll kind of pause here. Maybe we'll put this in the description down below. Now, the last thing I'm going to need is my quote amount. Now for this one, I don't really remember what that API name is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my settings. I'm gonna go to APIs, go to my API names, into my quotes module. And then I'm just gonna find, yep, there it is, grand total. And I'm gonna grab this API name, because that's what I need. So we'll say we'll get grand total. Now we're gonna make a map. This is just a place that I can put parameters and values. And then we'll add our quote amount. Now here, this amount needs to be from our deals module. So here I can see amounts, amount, good to go. And then I'll run my deal update. Do an update record to our deals module using our deal ID and our deal app. So now with this function in place, I'll go ahead and save it. Now you would want to test this, right? You'd want to come in, execute it, drop in your quote ID, right? Make sure that it works. But I want to show you it actually working in the record. Um, so I'm pretty darn confident this is going to work fine. Um, so I'm going to save and click associate. Again, always, 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 always test these functions. Um, I just, I know this one like the back of my hand. So now jumping back over to our quotes module, if I were to come in and update this quote to closed one and jump over to my deal, we should see that it's now been updated to closed one. And then our amount has been set based on the quote that was accepted. Right. So again, kind of a simple flow there. Some upgrades that you could do to that custom function, I and mean, then I'll say these in deluge terms, is get related records from my deal to get all quotes. And for any quote where the ID does not match my original quote ID that was updated to closed one, I could update it to lost or not needed or what have you. Couple little improvements that you could choose to make there just based on your preferences. What we'll do next is actually take this quote 
and convert it. So when you have a quote, the next step after it's been accepted is either to move it to a sales order or to an invoice just based on your particular business needs. I'm going to jump to an invoice. Going from the quote to sales order and quote to invoice are very similar. Sales orders are generally going to be used if there's some type of fulfillment process or maybe you're going to invoice out of another tool. They oftentimes serve as kind of like the work order. If we're just going to go straight to billing, then I will convert to an invoice. What you'll see here is that it does get its own status, but everything else essentially will pull over natively, right? So we've got our same items, our same services, linked up to the same deal, contact, and account. And so from here, you can go ahead and send this invoice out to whoever needs to receive it. Last thing I do want to show here before we wrap up is if I jump back over to my original records. So let's go ahead and just get to our deal. Sending out quotes, invoices, sales orders is all pretty straightforward. So let's say I've got a quote here. I can send it out via Zoho Sign if you like to have your quote signed. Otherwise, under the three dots, I can go to export to PDF. I can choose from whichever templates I would like to use, and it will give me a little preview over here on the right. And then I can just export this to a PDF locally on my device. If you'd like to change those templates or kind of make any adjustments to them, they're going to be under our settings. They're going to be under templates. And then within inventory, we can either adjust the existing template or we can clone it and make a totally new one. So if I come in here to click edit, I always just like to highlight the way to add one of these little merge tags is just to hit pound. Right. And that's going to pull up all the different fields for my quote, as well as fields for my account, contact, deal, owner, organization, child products, whatever it may be. All of those can just be added directly to this template. And you're able to then send it out from there, pulling in data from whichever quote you chose to actually create the PDF. Now, few little things I always like to show with quotes. So. I always like to set up follow-ups. A quote is just waiting to die, right? So we want to make sure that in our quotes module, we have some follow-ups, automations, reminders, just to make sure that things aren't going to fall through the cracks. So if I come into workflow rules, maybe inside of my quotes module, I want to create some type of like quote sent, follow-up, sequence type of automation. So maybe I'll say, hey, when the record is edited to a particular stage. I remember it this time. See, I'm learning. So let's say this is delivered, which basically means I've sent out the quote. It's landed in their inbox. Now, I'm going to do something a little weird here, and I'm going to say as long as the stage is delivered, and you might go, uh, why'd you do that? Um, you already set that in the trigger. The trick is I'm going to have some scheduled actions here that are going to follow up over the course of a few days. And this criteria will basically mean if they get back to us and they accept the quote and the stage is no longer delivered, these will stop creating, right? So I don't have these like emails going out saying, hey, we'd love to hear back on our quote. And they're like, uh, we accepted it. <laughs> we already got back to you, right? So here I can go ahead and set a sequence of follow-ups. So maybe I'll say, hey, three days later, I want to send an email notification. We'll say like, quote, follow-up one. We'll send this to the contact related to the quote, to their email address. Then I'm just gonna grab this template here, but you could choose any of the templates that you've created, these different email templates. Again, these are pretty easy to create. So if we did want to create one on the fly, I could come in and create a template and just you know give it a name, give it some uh, content. You know, that's a little, little bit of a bag there. And here I could say, you know, hi, contact, first name. Please accept my quote. I need the money. Thank you. And then I could bring in, you know, like maybe my signature from my user account here. And then I'll just save. Let's click save now. Drop it into a folder. And now back in my workflow rule, I've got this maybe better template that I can use. So I can save and associate that. Then maybe you want to say, hey, Another couple days later, so this, again, this seven days is versus the update, not the previous. So these don't stack. This doesn't actually mean 10 days. It means seven. Uh, maybe I'll create a task, right, that says, quote, follow-up is required. It's going to go out to whoever owns that quote. 
And then I could choose if I want to notify them via email or whatever other pathways. So just like that, we have set up quoting. We can send out quotes when they get closed one. We're going to update deals accordingly, both based on the stage and the amount. And then we've set up an easy little follow-up sequence just to try to mitigate any quote churn where people just haven't seen it or didn't get around to it, right? That little poke saying, hey, remember I sent this over. It does really work. It makes a big difference. And so I recommend you set up something similar to that just to make sure that you're not leaving money on the table. So with that, I think we're ready to wrap up here for today. As always, uh, let me know down in the comment section below what we should record next. Always open to your input and feedback. Make sure to like and subscribe down below if you found this video useful. And as always, my name is Tyler Colt and I will see you next time.